Lighting design practice is evolving right now. Uh, in the past, there was a few lighting designers. It was looked as, as a specialty. Um, and when we had uh, the ability to influence, we were able to influence in different ways than we do today. The, uh, the way we communicate, I think, is going to be the biggest factor. So the new lighting designer who has uh, been uh, spending time learning to design communicates differently than we have in the past. They tweet, uh, they use email a lot more than we did, they use all of the possible communication uh, devices at their, um, at their uh, need so that they can uh, be able to become more efficient and a better communicator. So what I see as, as new uh, individuals taking on the roles of principals in lighting design firms, that the way that they fulfill their obligations will be different and they'll spend less time thinking about the past and more about the future because of the way they communicate. And I think that's going to have the biggest impact uh, in lighting design as, uh, as we continue. The, the idea that we have to be, we have to understand what sensor technology or what a lighting designer has to understand as far as lighting uh, sensor technology is that we have to tell the client that when they're installing uh, light fixtures with sensor technology that they can actually expand its use. As an organization we believe that, um, that a lot of what takes place is application driven. So not just in lighting application in the way we actually do the designs itself, but how it influences uh, retail marketing, how it influences offices, environments, etc. There is uh, a, a vast amount of possibilities that lighting designers will be able to use to, to support the lighting design, the built environment, and exactly how it's, it's utilized. And I'm fascinated by this because it is really going to be part of the future of a lighting designer to, uh, to incorporate this technology in a way that benefits their clients and having it do multiple purposes is a great thing. When we've talked about spaces in the past, we've always talked about the idea of having a reflectance of a particular material that gets used back into the space. Well, when you talk about the idea of a 50% reflectance, that has a positive connotation to it, as opposed to the idea that you have 50% absorption in your space, and so therefore that absorption absorbs the light energy before you even start, before you turn on the light fixture, when you start looking at, uh, when you st look at the basis for the amount of lumens that are in the space, you actually have a, a place where you've already lost 50% light output if you have 50% absorption in the space. Um, we've had a number of different, very well-known interior designers and architects come back to us and say, thank you for the education, we're now thinking about our spaces and they've changed material selection based on the idea that we're now speaking about absorption. So that they're not creating completely dark environments, but they're creating environments that have a balance of dark and light that allow us to have a great, um, uh, a, a great style of space, a great space for human beings, uh, a place that you want to spend time but is also sustainable and energy efficient. And so the combination of LED technology and its amazing control possibilities, as well as um, the concept of absorption and the concept of uh, architectural integration will allow us to save more energy where people thought we were at our, uh, are kind of at the end of our line as far as the ability to save energy. We're making an impact today based on integrating all of those thoughts in uh, in the built environment and I, I truly believe that there's still a ways to go for us to become more energy efficient.